Ami tiaki api. Mohanchka hokshila hemelo. Maskapiri nalvati. Mihasa ni tam peto ashtewi. Chiga king. Elvati. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Tim Putra. I'm from the Muscopedian First Nation. My late wife was one of the shakers and movers in education. She passes away in my arms of May 28, 2017. I haven't been right since, but I'm working on it. I just wanted to start out by saying that both my uh, my baby is sitting at the back room, both of him and Dustin are the younger ones. My nephew Jody here is my technician. <coughs> I really wanted to take a business admin program so I could le learn computers, but the lab I learned off was so contaminated, I lost my exam five times, even the instructor, she'd seen it five different times. It was kind of a, technology is great, but it was a turn off for me. It's not my cup of tea. So I got uh, some help in the room here with my technical stuff. So having said that, in my language, when we were married for a long time, we'd say, all of you practice say, Mihasani. Mihasani. <coughs> so in my language, it means the other half of my prayer, the other half of my home. She's the one that raises children. She was the boss of the TY. That's her Indian name was Tom Petua Shtewe, her good day woman. She was named after one of her ancestors that were buried in uh, Wounded Knee <coughs> in South Dakota. So she was all three. What I'm going to be talking about today is people of the Ocheti, Shikoi, Oyate. But she was inspired to, like she had done some uh, education. Her, her master's was in ed psych. And based off of some research I was doing with discussions we had around our table, she was studying for her master's in ed psych. So she crafted a lot of position papers as she was, because they did look at residential school. And I was over, over uh, overseeing some research done within Kerry to Kettle, Chiga King, Tatanka Naji, Wood Mountain, Pipe Pod, Muscopedian Pasquas, as well as Nikanit. So we did some stuff in some semantic therapy. Yeah. In Cree, you would say, with Chita Win, people, people <coughs> helping people through a mental, physical, emotional, a spiritual hard time. We still do these things in our language, but we're not aware of it with our wakes and, and these ceremonies. So this is her picture. She was my pride, so I kind of wanted to put that up. I haven't been quite the same. We can go on to the next slide. So uh, I'm the Sundance chief out of Woptuga. My Indian name is Wahantraka Hokshila, meaning War Shield Boy. And my job when I got the name was to defend the children and help our old people. And sometimes I have to be the medium between the young and old and bring them together. And Chiga King over there, we did cultural camps. Some of the mothers and grandmothers thanked me because we had some of our younger females coming in talking about feminine hygiene. Many of us grew up in residential school. We had low self-esteem. It was easy for all of us to fall victim of drugs and alcohol and all that the promiscuous act activity becomes of these things. But we didn't know about some of these things I'm talking about. I come from an old medicine line. The original wolf to go help crazy horse become the man he was. So people of the, we move on to the next slide. It's out of Pine Ridge, South Dakota. Okay. The goals of the presentation today are to create an understanding of good health, happiness, help, uh, good health, understanding, with the idea that we are born with these understandings but forget them over historical tra trauma, colonization, assimilation, lateral and domestic violence. To create an awareness, and with awareness comes change, and how one may see themselves and others. So when we go to our ceremonies, our sweat lodges, these four things we pray for, good health, happiness, help, and understanding, that's the main goal of these ceremonies we go to. And then because of, I'm, I'm uh, 10 years in a residential school through catechism, they made us ashamed of our ceremonies. And we were afraid to uh, participate in their ceremonies because, like I was starting out earlier, they used to call us Lee Savage, little savages. So uh, we were conditioned to fear our culture, our spirituality. They wanted to break our language. So now we're dealing with the disruption of, uh, of uh, disruption of highly civilized groups and nations of people. 
So these are all our complications today. So what I'm going to talk about is these ceremonies. We chose the Wushki, Wushki, Wushki. Good health, happiness, help, and understanding. One more time. Ocheti Shukoi Oyate. People as the seven council fires. The French and the English for 300 years, all they wanted out of North America were their st uh, beaver pelts for their stylish hats. So we were known as the Ocheti Shikoyo Yate, which were the Dakota, Nakota, the Titwens, the Lakota people. But uh, we relied on interpretation. And a lot of the Ashnabi and Cree worked with the French. And uh, when they were coming, they were wanting to know who the, these people were east of the Missouri River. So when they say serpent, they would say, not a wis. And then when you pluralize a group of people, you would say, not a wis Sioux. And then pretty soon, not a wis got dropped and we became just known as the Sioux. But if those of us of prayer were kind of proud of, proud of who we are. We're either Dakota, my late wife, Mihasane, she was all three. Dakota, Nakota, Lakota. So that's who we are. P one more time. Ocheti, Shikoi, Oyate. People of the seven council fires, which were the Dakota. We can move on to the next slide. We're just looking at a model. It all started from the Madewa Kantua, out of, uh, say, Madewa Kantua. And that's the oldest. And they were out of Minnesota. Say Minnesota. Minnesota. That's plenty of water. So they were out of those territories, but those long ago people weren't perfect and neither are we. As people's numbers start to uh, to get large and people started quarreling and not get along, there were divisions within our Teoshpais. So that's how all of them, the Madewa Kantawa has seven different D dialects within their nation. So we're mathematical people. Even the, the Hectuan Na, the northern Nakota, they have different N dialects from territories. Manitoba, you have some up in Eden Valley. There's seven different Teoshpais. Even in Saskatchewan here, there's uh, there's pheasant rump, uh, carry the kettle, uh, what's that other one, sweet grass, mosquito. 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 Yeah, so there's different end dialects here within uh, the Hectuan. Uh, so they were referred to as the Northern Assiniboine or, or Nakota. Okay, among the Sioux, there were historically seven central community ceremonial rites. These ceremonies occur during different stages of human life seasonal change. Though different in nature, the common focus among all of them was health and healing of individuals and the community. Proper, regular involvement in the essential community ceremonies was and still is seen as fundamental to Lakota healing. The prohibition of Sioux ceremonies and gatherings during the 18 and 1900s resulted in the loss of cultural community, knowledge, and reduce the importance and frequency of some of these ceremonies. Today, these ceremonies are practiced in varying degrees, depending on the region and the community. The most common of these community ceremonies today are the... The pipe. The pipe. Sweat lodge. The sweat lodge. Vision quest. Vision quest. And uh, sun dance. And sun dance. Thank you. Okay. Each of these four ceremonies are used to bring psychological physical, spiritual, and emotional healing to individuals and communities. And uh, why I'm talking like this, we've been colonized and Christianized in such a way where we fear our culture and our spirituality. Like I said, I'm, I'm fourth generation residential school survivor. They didn't allow spirituality practice until 1975 here in Canada. Oh, 76, sorry. So it start, all started in Wounded Knee in 1973 where they started making change in the Canadian policy. There were people doing rain dance and, and sun dance and sweat lodges, but they weren't as active as they are now. We're at a time of reawakening. But along the way, our, our young people 
are not actively involved in the ceremonies the way they should be, but that's okay. It's bits and pieces like our language. So this one, first one I wanted to start out by talking about was the Chinupa. In the pipe ceremony this morning, this pipe was brought to us through the spirit of a woman. It's as sacred to us as the Ten Commandments are to the Catholics. When we're dealing with the disruption of highly civilized nations of people, the respect for the females has been taken from us. We have over 4,000 missing and murdered indigenous women across the way, across our nation, Turtle Island. But I was going to share with our young people, we got some young people in the room, this pipe was brought to us through the spirit of a woman. I want you all to practice saying, Pihinchila, Ska, We, Pihinchila, Ska, We. Pihinchila is a calf, Ska is white, and We is woman. Anything that was sacred that give life in our worldview, we viewed as Wakha. So the Wiyas are along those lines, our children, Wakayoja, those are gifts from the Creator that we have to give the tools to be responsible people. <clears throat> so with that pipe, there were two warriors out on a resource, and they were looking for goods for their nation. One of them was a better hunter, a better fighter. He, they both noticed something in the distance coming, but it was too far for them to tell. And as they got closer, the one that wasn't as good as Hunter, he started feeling a little intimidated. He started to pray. And as the older one that was a better Hunter, he realized it was a woman. He said, now we are Hemi Ta. That woman, she's going to be mine. The other one says, here, here, hachush No, no, don't, don't do that. We check you. Pray. I'm using my language. You guys can practice. Come on now. Here, here. Yeah. Don't do that. I just got cheeky. But uh, really in the old days when these two men were out looking for re resources, we that's what's wrong with our nation today is we forgot the proper respect for our females. These ones here were their grandmothers, their mothers, their great-grandmothers. These young ones in the back, they don't have husbands. Maybe they do, but one day they will. So when we're praying with this sacred pipe, we never go around and wish for somebody else's what they have because we put in motion jealousy that does not go with this pipe. So if we're going to be real pipe keepers, that truth and honesty has to be throughout all of our affairs or nothing at all. So that, that piece of the story, she told that young man, go back to your circle of camp, your Teoshpaya, practice that, Teoshpaya. It means a small band of people living together. Get all the young girls that are pure and pick a circle of sage. The highest gift a man could offer up to another man was his daughter who was pure. If he deemed them worth, worth, uh, worthy of taking care of them. You have to remember, we, those were times where there was no domestic violence. There was no drugs. There was no alcohol. We lived in our natural state. There was... There was no quarreling amongst the men and women. The women had their jobs, we had ours. We had a perfect society. It's not that perfect because people would gossip. But uh, the other one, she said, we'll get to build a circle of sage and bring in something sacred for the nation to learn from. She told the other one, when I was coming this way, you, you wanted me, you're wishing for me. You don't have to fight me. I'll give myself freely to you. I want you to say this next word, Mwakias. Yes. The thunder beans, no matter how brave or how weak a man or woman is, they can instill the same level of fear. So as this man dis dis dismounted his horse and he, and he laid with that woman, she wrapped him up with her robe, the Wakias came. And it was thundering and lightning, and as fast as she covered him up, she uncovered him. So that piece of our creation story teaches us that we need to have a proper protocol for the women. And we don't lust and love over them. They're not there for our benefit. So that piece of the pipe, I'm teaching not only my son, my grandkids, and other young men I'm working with on domestic violence. I do that kind of stuff as well. You know, trying to mentor our men into being more responsible. So that sacred pipe was brought to us through the spirit of a woman. 
I was over at St. Victor's and we did pipe ceremony over there to try to preserve those petroglyphs. Because in Nova Scotia, we went over there for Sundance last summer. They have petroglyphs that are not seen by the general public. The pipe is up there. So we it shows us we had a diverse trade route here. We didn't more like modern times. Oh, this has to be a Cree way, or this is a Dakota way, or this is a Schnabby way. We were more inclusive. And having said that, many of us, our parents and our ancestors married back and forth. So we got along. We need to go back to that concept. So that's, that's the Chinupa. The next one is the NETP. Each and every one of us was brought here through a spirit of a woman. <coughs> that's why we need to learn that proper respect. Even us men were brought here through the spirit of a woman. So that sweat lodge represents a mother's womb. In the old days, the women didn't have to sweat because every 28 days they have a natural cleansing, whereas men, we don't have that. And then some of my grandpa said, you don't sweat all the time. In the old days, we sweat whenever the need was there. We only sweat four times a year. But you have to realize our ancestors had to do everything in hiding. That Indian agents and all these teoshpais, all these reserves, they're really concentration camps. So that's how much the control the government had over us. So we go to that sweat lodge. That's our oldest form of prayer. They found a skull in Wyoming that's uh, 15 million years older than the one they found in Asia. The one they found in Asia is 35 million years old. So we've always been here. They try to come across with this Bering Straits with that superior Western mindset they want to own everything. Even in modern times, they want to own the galaxies. It wasn't just Plato and Socrates that named the galaxies. Our females had that star knowledge before they were colonized. We've been, we're dealing with the disruption of a highly civilized groups of people, nations of people who forgot who we were. The next one I want to talk about is the uh, Humblechia, to cry and to pray for a, a vision. That's our highest form of prayer. When we needed, my baby left the room. When he was gifted his first son, he grows up watching me in Sundance. He went out on the hill and he asked the Creator, Tunkashla, to pity him, give him the understanding he needs to be a man of discipline, a teacher, a hunter, a provider, an educator for his son. Us men, we want our firstborn to be at least a son, and then we know our bloodlines go on. I just got two boys. I've got adopted girls, though, but I've also got five additional adopted boys. So I was really rich in the things I've come to do. So that humbilechia is our highest form of prayer. And the next one, the sun dance. I sun danced uh, eight years. After sun dancing eight years, my overall goal was to make four in a row. We follow old laws out of the Great Plains, even Leonard Crow Dog, Orville Looking Horse, they make our medicine man, the head Nacha, the head Uwipi man. So out of our sun dance out of the Great Plains, we're the only ones that follow the old laws, meaning that there is really no food or water. We don't have a soup truck come in. They only get one sweat when they start their, their journey and they get one at the end when it's over. Not to criticize anybody, there's different places, people do different things, but we follow the old laws. I'm not trying to brag about nothing or nothing like that. The point is that those old laws before colonization and assimilation, we live by them. There's modern philosophies going around where women say, well, how come we can't go into the sweat lodge or we can't go to the pipe ceremonies when you're under moon time? And there's modern teachings but that's somebody else's teachings. That's reintroduced. In the old days, we followed old laws. That's why I'm truly trying to hammer up to the old laws and we be respectful. I follow that altar where it can't be changed for my son or my grandson. I have to follow it, live that way. So that's the, uh, where are my sun nets? So I sun danced eight years. Back in 94, uh, our medicine man, Sam Moose Camp, we call him Mato Blihichia, Courageous Bear, said, Tim, you're going to help me. Oh, huh, I'll help you. You're going to be Sundance Chief, and I thought it was just for that dance. He said, no, after this, I'm going to develop my Teoshpai. 
you'll be Sundance Chief, you'll have to go to all the ceremonies. Because all I ever wanted to do was just to go make four, and then I wanted to start fasting and raise my family. But it led me down a good path. It led me, it gave me the, the basis where I take my time and I learn these ceremonies. I do all seven of these ceremonies, I'm going to explain to you. And within those seven, there's seven different ways they could be done as well. So we're not here for that. The next one is the uh, the Hunka ceremony, making of relations. I think that's been there since the beginning of time, and even we do it now in modern times. We look at our young people. They like friends, they make good friends, they take each other as brother and sister, so we do them, but we don't do the ceremony to the degree we used to do them, because a lot of people don't know that knowledge. I lose a sister about uh, a year before I lose my wife, and then uh, I got mixed up this morning, I was lonesome for my wife, so I called her Tom Petowashtewi, but uh, it's Ampowi uh, Chakpewea, I named her in ceremony, she won the Indian name. And I called her Morning Star Woman. And I take her and I put her in place because the sister I lost, I lose a little sister, but I gain an older sister. So she can chew me out and she has the right and she's older than me. So that's how we used to do that when we'd lose loved ones. Spiritually, I put another woman in my wife's place just to be a grandmother for the family. That's what Sitting Bull did when they killed his, his Tatanka Yotanka. All of you say that, Tatanka Yotanka. <laughs> Sitting Bull did that when they killed his family. He adopted another family because they didn't want his bloodlines to go on. And then Sitting Bull also had a sister Mary over in uh, uh, Chega King, carried the kettle. And that was part of my wife's bloodlines. So there is people out there that have they couldn't kill all that that knowledge and that history. And this uh, sixth one, I, I lose my late wife, May 28th, 2017. We bury her June 2nd by the 4th, and I had not only had one, two, three ceremonies to do, I had three wopilas. Wopila, say, all of you say wopila. wopila. That's giving thanks. I had three thanksgiving <coughs> ceremonies for individuals that were either doctored or, or uh, went out to fast or something. I can't remember what the detail of the ceremonies, but I had three of them to do on the 4th of uh, June. So if it wasn't for the ceremonies, I might have committed suicide. I thought about drinking and going back to drugs. My baby leaves the room. He's 37 years old. The, older, the other one's 40. They've never seen me other than normal. But the thought did cross my mind. But I was also suicidal. But for you young people here, when we take our own life, the, the, our, all, each and every one of us are given about 82 years to live here. That's our staff of life. We've got some that are past that. So we got 82 years. And when we go judge for, be judged for both our good and bad deeds, the seven sisters were that big dipper. Is there was a chief long ago give up seven of his daughters to these. That star knowledge. That's why we have that star knowledge within our nation. He gave up seven of his daughters. That's where we go to be judged for both our good and bad deeds. This is old knowledge, and it's real knowledge. There's people that still follow this knowledge today. That's why I'm explaining it to young people. So we have to go there. I go to a Catholic boarding school. They call it St. Peter's Pearly Gates. Us, where those seven sisters are. That's where we go to be judged for both our good and bad deeds. So I'd sooner pay here. When I left residential school, I drank and did drugs. It was, I was very chaotic. But I'd sooner pay now for my shortcomings of long ago than have that fall on my children or my grandchildren. That's why I tell my boys, make sure you tell your kids that I was crazy. I go steal and I do this and this and that. I told the the truth so that if he's living right or my grandkids are living right, they don't end up blaming the Creator. Oh, I must be paying for the sins of the father or grandfather in some cases. So that uh, keeping of a soul, when she dies, you've seen in that picture I had long braids, I lose a little sister, I cut half my hair off, and then I lost a good sister-in-law, 
my hair was longer than this and I lose her so I can shave it right down to the scalp. But now I'm ready to start moving forward. It's going to start coming back if I can get past the curls. If I can get past that, then it'll come back. If not, then I'll cut it again. But uh, this hair is sacred. That's why the men braid it. You're braiding mind, body, spirit. It's our, our identity. When we went to residential school, they cut our hair. I wondered who had died. Even though I don't grow up like this, I knew hair had uh, spiritual meaning. So this keeping of a soul, it was very therapeutic for me. Every, every moon, we follow a lunar year. There's, in a lunar year, every 28 days, there's a full moon in the 12-month cycle. So for one full year, I added something to that bundle, and I would feed her every meal I'd eat. They'd eat before me. Made spirit, spirit dishes. So even in the ceremonies, I'd make spirit dishes, and the spirits would would, uh, would eat that food. So those are practices, even though you're not maybe active in the ceremonies, you young people can be putting in your home to honor those you left. You start feeding those that left, then they're going to help us with our thinking. So that's the keeping of a soul. The seventh one is coming of age. Every seven years, each one of us go through a change of life. In the old days, the mothers were the teachers along with the grandmothers. The grandmothers were the memory bank, the knowledge base. They were the ones with that star knowledge. But due to colonization and assimilation and that superior colonial thought, they wanted to take that knowledge away from us. Even in the East, there's recorded history where the early Jesuits were blown away with how we lived across the nation. We'd pray, we'd get up and pray in the middle of the night. We'd pray before the sun come up. We'd stop what we're doing and pray in the middle of the day. And then we'd also pray in the evening before we went on a buffalo hunt, after we went on a buffalo hunt. <laughs> The men, we just had to kill the buffalo. The women did 99.9% .9 of the work. They would carve all the meat. They would tan the robes. They would dry the, the meat. They would prepare the meat for their homes, their TYs. So the women did all of that work. That's why I commend all you women, even though you didn't grow up like that, your ancestors lived that way. So that's why in any of my ceremonies, my sweat lodge, I talk to these young men about... Uh, about honor, being honorable and respectful to the women. And in the sweat lodge, that's where I do most of my teaching. You're just getting an overview of what I do and how I do it and why I do it. So every seven years, whether it's boy or girl, we go through change of life. Usually at about 48, you've been through all your changes and you better come to terms with all of your shortcomings. For if you don't, then your home, your TY is always going to be weak. Residential school, there's lots of gossiping and backbiting. That's how our reserves run today. My band office is like your band office. There's total chaos, lots of gossiping, backbiting. Every two years we go through political differences. There's fighting. My Tioshpa is the same as yours. That hand at colonization and imprinting has reshaped who we are, what we are, how we are. They're the same across Canada here, Turtle Island, in the United States, they're the same. In our band offices, in our schools, in our healthcare, nobody has gone back to a traditional way of life other than a few families. We all have creation stories within our Teepees. The, the grandmothers and the grandfathers would share creation stories. Some of them, some of them had we check each sack. Nanabush. Ours is Hiktomani and Shagamani to spider and a coyote told us the do's and don'ts. This one here, the Pangea theory, I may not be saying that right, but we had we had believed in our worldview the earth was half land and half water. The Washichus, they want to claim that. That's their theory. We knew that. That uh, earth was half land and half water. 
I want you all to practice saying, Onchi Maka. Onchi Maka. Grandmother Earth, or Mother the Earth, all life was brought to us through the spirit of a woman. Onchi Maka sent out warnings to the people, to the Oyate. Say Oyate. Oyate. That's the people. So Onchi Maka sent out warnings to behave because people started courting. We started getting mad, we started gossiping, we started warring. And Ochimaka was giving warnings to the Oyate, to the people. Behave, for if you don't, you all will pay. But there were some that would listen to this natural environment. They talk about the environment being our teacher. How many of us live on our concentration camps, our reserves? There's a few of us live on our reserves. That's really what they were. If you don't understand what's disruption I'm talking about, I do blanket exercise, and all this land was bought and stole beneath our feet. So there's really more to it than that, but we don't have time for that. But uh, coming back to this Pangea theory, the earth sent out warnings up to four times, and then finally she got fed up, and those that listened, she said, come inside. She called them in her mother in their womb, and she shook and she belched and she shook and she belched. <clears throat> and then the continents started to separate. But if you ever put these continents to together, they'll come together like a puzzle and we could make half. But the Creator, that's his Unchimaka, that was her warning to the people. So that was how their continents were formed. And for a long time, I want you all to practice it. Mitako ye. Mitako ye. Oyasin. So when you'd said, you'd say, Mitako ye oyasin. That's all of my relations, but when you become a fluent speaker, say, Mitakiasin. You can cut vowels. So that's a short prayer in itself, meaning that you understand. You're related to all of creation. Say Tatanka Oyate. Buffalo Nation. Hehaka Oyate. Elk Nation. Fish. Oga Oyate. Now this is going to be a tongue twister. Geese. Hagunta Tanka Oyate. Hagunta Tanka. The second one was a flood. It wasn't just the Catholics and what happened in Europe. All the nations endured some hardship. Again, the peoples got along for the longest time. We didn't more. We got along. We traded. We'd go steal horses and we'd steal women. Or somebody would come and steal our women and our horses. So there was taboo to interbreed. It was taboo to marry anything closer than third cousin. Not like Europe, where Europe, they're marrying their first cousin. They want to keep that blue blood, that royalty. In our nation, it was taboo to interbreed. So uh, a lot of, long ago, those peoples got along for the longest time after that Pangea theory when the, when the earth separated. But in their second natural disaster, again, the people started quarreling. As we say, wachinko onchi maka. Again, onchi maka. Our mother, the earth, sent out warnings. <clears throat> Behave, for if you don't, I'm going to have to send out a reminder. So as they got away from that beginning of that creation story and people stopped listening, the second creation story is she put a mass flood. All of you say mini, mini. Sota. 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 That means plenty of water, mini sota. The Dakota didn't have to come out of the wetlands. There was lots of Lots of resources, lots of richness there, so they didn't have to come out. And that pipe that we use, we prayed with the pipe this morning, that bowl is the flesh and blood of our ancestors that wouldn't listen. So there was a mass flood, there's a quarry there, and that's where that pipe comes, and that's why we're able to shape it and use it in such a good way. So that was the flesh and blood of our ancestors. So that's our second natural disaster. As I was telling you, my late wife was a well-known edu well educator. She went on a science fair up to, uh, 
up to uh, Northwest Territories. And over in the Northwest Territories, they found out Dakota uh, pottery and arrowheads, uh, Dene and Mohawk. So this continent was different. Where we are here was an ancient swamp. So uh, she got a picture, an arrow, an aerial photograph, and I wish I would have kept that because when you held it up, you'd see the Pehinchula Skawi, the white buffalo cap. She brought that, that's how long that, she, she brought that pipe here because there was great change coming to our nations. That's way before the Washitus or the Munyash come to our islands. So that's the last, our third creation story. We are talking about the Pehinchula Skawi and her teachings, the creation stories. I'm coming to share with you because these are the knowledge I go back, I go out when I was a young man acquiring these things. I worked in child welfare, I've worked in justice, I've worked in education, I've also worked in health. So along the way I've had, I've been blessed with many good things, so these are the things I come to learn. From watching my wife, I can only speak of what I had, I don't have that today. She was a nurturer. She was the teacher, and she also took care of the TY, took care of the home, and even us when we're sick. This is how much richness I had at one time. And as I cross over to the male's roles, that's why in Sweat Lodge I always tell these young men, my grandsons and that, how important these females are to us, that we respect them, we take care of them. So you young men, if you're not married, when you go out to look, you know, make sure you know what you're getting involved with. Same thing with you young women. Make sure you know the homes that you're attracted to. Watch their be the behaviors of their parents. How are they? Are they drinking or doing drugs? They might leave you in a bad way. Even us men, we have to watch the weas are our weakness. The two weakness for man is mini we choni le that water is sacred, it gives us life. And the weas. And for the women, it's the other way around. It's water and men. So we have to be respectful to each other, take care of each other, share knowledge, and be good to each other. So I was teasing this young one at the back. I was asked to go to Toronto. And many of our young people won't come back to our Tioshbai as our reserves unless it's a funeral. Many of them are growing up in these urban jungles. Some of them, I was in Toronto, they had a sweat lodge on top of a building. I said, wow, no, I don't want to go in there. So then they took me to a house that was in the backyard. There's street lights all over. So people are doing what they can to adapt the sweat lodge. They'll never leave those places. And we got to realize those are our, our relatives. That's why I ended up going over there, because they come out to Sundance and they looked on and they wanted to know if I could come and speak to our youth. So having said that, I'm glad to be speaking to the youth here. It was just to create an awareness, and with awareness comes change of thought, like I started talking about in my ceremony, at the beginning of my presentation. I'm not even in ceremony. I'll get it right yet, though. Having said that, I just wanted to thank you for your time. And Hope you take what I said and use it only in a good way for your children, your grandchildren. Help them. We're going to help them.